Hey there, ambitious learners. <laughs> Ever dreamt of YouTube success, but like kind of cringe at the thought of facing a camera? Yeah, totally. You are in the right place, my friend. 100%. Today's deep dive is all about cracking the code of faceless YouTube channels. Ooh, I like that. Your shortcut to sharing your passion Please. and expertise mm -hmm. without needing a Hollywood makeover. Love that, love that. What's so fascinating is how fast this faceless format is blowing up right now. Really? We're going to unpack why it's so effective right now yeah. and the exact strategies you can use to like totally crush it. I am so ready. Even as competition heats up. Okay, so faceless YouTube. Yeah. Paint me a picture. Okay. What does a successful channel actually look like if there's no charismatic host stealing the show? Okay, so imagine this. You're diving deep, you know, into the world of ancient Greece, right? Right. But instead of a talking head, yeah. you get these, like, stunning visuals of the Acropolis, maybe some epic music, all kind of woven together with a captivating voiceover. I love that. That's the essence of Faceless YouTube. Cool. Startup-wise. A channel we dug into. Okay. Perfect example. Yeah. They've built a massive following by letting the content be the star. Interesting. High quality editing, right. strategic use of stock footage. Mm. It's an experience that's both informative and incredibly engaging. So it's not about sacrificing personality. Right. It's about channeling it through like a different medium. Exactly. Right. And skill early proves how fast a faceless channel can gain traction. Yeah. They got like 260,000 subscribers with just a handful of videos. Wow. They're already earning thousands of dollars a month. Thousands. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So what's their secret sauce? Spill the tea. Is it all about fancy AI tools? AI is definitely a part of it and we'll dive into exactly how to use it later on. Okay. But the foundation, the bedrock of their success yeah. starts with laser focusing on that right niche so startup-wise, really hammered that home. Yeah. Niche down, niche down, niche down. Niche down, it's counterintuitive, right? You would think a broader appeal would be better. Right. But they're saying get specific, yeah. really specific. Absolutely. It's like this, would you rather be a small fish in a massive overcrowded pond right. or the big fish in a smaller pond where everyone sees you? That makes sense. That's the power of niche. I like that a lot. Take summoning salt, for example. Okay. They do deep dives into the history of video game speedruns. Wow. A niche within a niche. Wow. Yet they've got this massive, passionate audience proving that even the most specific topics can find a dedicated following. It makes sense when you think about it. Okay. Like a niche, you're not just creating content, you're like curating an experience for a very specific type of viewer. Exactly. You become like the go-to yes. to that topic. You are the person. But that brings up a big question. How do you actually find that perfect niche? Right. Is it gut feeling, research? A little bit of both. Here's where it gets interesting. Okay. We came across this awesome tool called NAXLEV. NAXLEV, okay. It analyzes YouTube data to identify niches with high viewership, but lower competition. Oh, wow. Like having a secret map to hidden treasure. I love it. But And this is crucial. Your niche also needs to be something you're genuinely passionate about. Yeah. Something you can see yourself creating content around for the long haul. It's that long haul part that trips people up. It does. It's so easy to chase the latest trend. Right. But how do I make it clear? Yeah. Burnout is real. It is. If your heart's not in it, it'll show. 100%. Viewers can spot inauthenticity a mile away. And this is where choosing a niche with strong monetization potential comes in. Okay. It's not just about passion. It's about sustainability. Right. How Tarai highlighted that tutorial-based channels, especially in the business and finance sectors, yeah. tend to have higher earning potential because they can tap into things like affiliate marketing, even selling their own digital products down the line. Speaking of which, have you heard of Brian Garvin? He's got this free affiliate marketing guide. It's called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Love it. And it is packed with strategies to boost your YouTube income. Amazing. You can find the link in his YouTube bio, BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. It's a game changer for anyone serious about turning their faceless channel into a sustainable business. For sure. But before we get too deep into monetization, yeah. let's talk about crafting content that actually gets those views. Okay. Because without an audience, even the best monetization strategy won't matter much, right? Right. It's like building a beautiful storefront, but forgetting to unlock the doors. Exactly. So how do you make those faceless videos pop, especially in a sea of content? 
This is where understanding your target audience is key. Okay. It's not just about what you find interesting, but what they find valuable, entertaining, or shareworthy. Makes sense. Remember, you're competing for attention, so grabbing viewers in those first few seconds is crucial. It's true. How do I really emphasize creating high-quality content consistently? But quality can be subjective. It is. What makes a faceless video stand out? What are those key elements that keep viewers hooked? Think about it. Without a charismatic face to draw you in, right. your titles and thumbnails become your first impression. Sure. They're the digital handshake that either grabs the viewer's attention or gets lost in the scroll. Yeah. We're talking bold text. Okay. Contrasting colors, mm -hmm. a little touch of visual intrigue that makes someone stop and think, okay, I need to know what this is about. So it's almost like those old school movie posters, right? Yes. Bold fonts, maybe a dramatic image. Yeah. Just enough to pique your interest. Exactly. Do you have any tips for crafting titles and thumbnails that really convert? Oh, yeah. I feel like that's a skill in itself. It is, but don't worry. It's a learnable skill. Okay, good. One effective strategy we came across from Skillerly is competitor analysis. Okay. Not in a creepy way, of course, right. but take a look at what's already working in your niche. What kind of titles are getting clicks? What kind of thumbnails are catching people's eyes? Use that as inspiration, always putting your own unique spin on it. So it's like having a cheat sheet. Yeah. But instead of copying, you're using it for inspiration, yeah. understanding the underlying principles. Exactly. Smart. Right. Now, before we go any further, I have to share a fantastic resource for anyone serious about maximizing their YouTube earnings. Oh, tell me more. You ready for this? Yes. You guys know I love a good affiliate marketing hack. Yeah. And Brian Garvin, that's Brian with an I. Okay. Has totally cracked the code. Amazing. His free guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is a game changer. Yes. And you can grab yours over at BrianGarvin.com. Nice. Just pop your name and email into the form. The link's in his YouTube bio. And get ready to level up your monetization game. Love it. Now that we've got that covered, let's dive into the heart of faceless video creation. Okay. Where AI comes in as your secret weapon. Ooh. Remember that point about high-quality content? <laughs> well, AI can help you achieve that, even if you're not a video editing wizard. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm intrigued. Let's unpack this whole AI thing because it feels like everyone's talking about it, but not everyone's explaining how to actually use it effectively, especially for faceless channels. Right. Where do you even begin? There are so many incredible AI tools available now. It can be a bit overwhelming. It can. But we found a few that are particularly useful for faceless YouTube creators. Okay. Invid AI, for example, is a game changer. Yeah. It can help you create entire videos oh, wow. from script to screen in minutes. Wait, hold on. Entire videos. Yeah. From scratch. Mm -hmm. That's wild. It's amazing. But what about those of us who aren't exactly tech savvy? Is there a steep learning curve with these AI tools? That's the beauty of it. Yeah. They're designed to be user friendly, even for beginners. Yeah. Take CapCut, for example. Okay. It's a free video editing software that's incredibly intuitive. You can learn the basics in an afternoon and start creating professional looking videos in no time. Nice. And for those eye-catching thumbnails we talked about, yeah. Canva is your new best friend. Canva, yeah. Drag, drop, and design your way to click-worthy masterpieces. Okay, this is blowing my mind. So you're saying you can literally go from idea to finished video using just these AI tools? Absolutely. Wow. But, and this is a big but, yeah. AI should be a tool to enhance your creativity, right. not replace it. Okay. Simply churning out generic AI-generated content without any personality or unique perspective is a recipe for disaster. That's what Adam Enfroy was saying, right? Yes. Like, yeah, AI can make a video, but it can't replicate your unique voice, your perspective, your why. Exactly. Think of AI as your talented but slightly uninspired assistant. I like that. It can handle the technical stuff, but it's up to you to inject the personality, the passion, the unique perspective that will make your channel stand out. So it's about finding that sweet spot. Yes. Yeah. Between human creativity and AI efficiency. 100%. I like that. Mm. Batty in business had a great analogy. Oh, yeah. She said, to think of AI as a coworker who creates the first draft. Okay. But you're the boss, the editor-in-chief. Right. You get to shape the final product. Make it your own. Love that analogy. 
And that's where your unique perspective comes in. Okay. Maybe you have a quirky sense of humor, a knack for storytelling, or a talent for explaining complex topics in a way that's easy to understand. Right. Those are the things that AI can't replicate. Yeah. And that's what will make your channel truly special. Your unique you. Exactly. And speaking of special, remember those faceless niches we discussed earlier? Oh, yeah. The ones with the potential to bring in the big bucks. Exactly. Choosing the right niche combined with strategic use of AI can be incredibly lucrative. Right. The Zinni Studio had a fantastic breakdown of all the different monetization methods out there. We're talking affiliate marketing, brand deals, even creating your own online courses or digital products. Wow, there's so many. There's a whole world of possibilities beyond just those pre-roll ads. Okay, so we've got our niche. We're using AI strategically. We're building a thriving community around our brand. It's all coming together. What's next? How do we actually get those first videos out there and start building momentum? Ah, the million dollar question. Right. Launching your faceless YouTube channel. Yes, how do we do it? Grow with Alex had some fantastic advice on this. Okay. And it might surprise you. Okay. He stressed the importance of quality over quantity, especially in those crucial early days. Interesting. So no rushing to churn out a ton of AI generated content to fill up the channel. Not if you want to make a lasting impact. Okay. Grow with Alex recommends treating your first few videos like mini masterpieces. Ooh, I like that. Strip them out fully, even if you're using AI tools for editing or voiceover. So take your time, plan it out, yeah, and make those first impressions count. Precisely. I like it. Remember, you only get one chance to make a first impression. Right. Make it memorable. I love it. And speaking of memorable, don't underestimate the power of a strong launch strategy. Okay, spill the tea. What does a killer launch strategy look like for a faceless channel? <laughs> this is where those generic YouTube gurus usually hold back. You're right. This is insider information. One strategy those gurus don't want you to know about is the power of cross-promotion. Okay. Think about it. You've probably got a network of friends, family, or colleagues who would be more than happy to share your amazing new channel with their own circles. That's such a simple but brilliant idea. Right. It's like creating a ripple effect of awareness. Exactly. But what about those of us who are starting from scratch with no existing audience? That's where platforms like Twitter, Facebook groups, even niche online forums can become your best friends. Okay. Share your videos, engage in conversations, and position yourself as an expert in your niche. So it's about strategically getting your content in front of the right people, even if you're starting with a smaller audience. Exactly. And as you start to gain some traction, those all-important keywords become your secret weapon. Keywords, right. That's where things tend to get a bit technical for me. Yeah. I know they're important, but to be honest, the whole SEO thing sometimes feels like a foreign language. It can feel that way. It really can. But don't worry, there are tools to help you navigate this. Okay, good. Remember vidIQ, that tool we mentioned earlier? Yeah, the one for finding those hidden niche opportunities. That's the one. Well, vidIQ is also incredible for keyboard research. Oh, wow. Think of it like a treasure map, but instead of X marks the spot, yeah. it's those high traffic keywords your target audience is searching for. Okay, so how does it actually work? Walk me through it. Okay, so let's say your faceless channel is all about teaching people how to create stunning travel videos using their smartphones. Okay, cool. You'd go into vidIQ and type in a broad keyword like smartphone videography. The tool will then show you a whole bunch of related keywords. Their search volume competition level. It's like having a cheat sheet for what people are actually searching for on YouTube. Wow, that's incredibly helpful. So you're not just guessing, you're using data to inform your content strategy. Exactly. And the Zinni Studio had another great tip for keyword research. Okay. Use YouTube's own search filters. Yeah. When you start typing something into the search bar, yeah. you'll see a drop-down menu with suggestions. Wow, right, right. These are popular searches related to your keyword. Okay. Giving you valuable insights into what your target audience is looking for. So it's like having a sneak peek into the minds of your potential viewers. And once you've got those keywords locked in, how do you actually use them effectively? Is it just about stuffing them into your video description? That's a common mistake. Keyword stuffing is a surefire way to get penalized by the YouTube algorithm. Oh. You want to use your keywords naturally in your video title, description, and even in the spoken audio of your video.
So it's about weaving them in seamlessly, almost like you're having a natural conversation. Exactly. This is all making so much sense now. And speaking of natural, you know what else is a natural part of the YouTube journey? What's that? Monetization. Yes. Brian Garvin's 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate is an incredible resource for anyone looking to monetize their channel. Oh, yes. Is Brian time? For those of you who haven't heard me rave about it already, Brian Garvin, that's Brian with an I, has this fantastic free guide that walks you through the ins and outs of affiliate marketing. It's amazing. From finding the right products to maximizing your earnings. Yes. Head over to BrianGarvin.com. You can find the link in his YouTube bio and grab your copy today. Do it. You won't regret it. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, the exciting world of keywords. But here's the thing. Even with the best keywords, titles, and thumbnails, if your content isn't engaging, right. if people are clicking away after a few seconds, well, none of it really matters, does it? You're right. It all comes back to creating high-quality, engaging content that keeps those viewers hooked. Exactly. But how do you actually measure engagement? Right. How do you know if people are actually enjoying your videos or just clicking away in boredom? This is where those mystical YouTube analytics come into play. Ooh, analytics. They hold the key to understanding your audience and unlocking the secrets to long-term success. I like it. Ready to dive in. Absolutely. Let's demystify the world of analytics because I have a feeling they're not as scary as people make them out to be. Yeah, right. Yeah. They're actually quite fascinating. Think of your analytics dashboard as your channel's secret diary. Okay. It reveals what's working, what's not. Yeah. And most importantly, what your viewers love and don't love about your content. So spill the secrets. What kind of juicy insights can we glean from these analytics? I'm ready to unlock my channel's hidden potential. Well, for starters, Grow With Alex emphasized that regularly checking your analytics like once a week can be a game changer. It's not about obsessing over the numbers. Right. It's about understanding the story behind the numbers. So it's like being a detective looking for clues to what's working and what's not. Exactly. For example, let's say you notice a significant drop off in viewers during a certain segment of your videos. Okay. That's a clear sign to either rework that segment or try a different approach next time. Right. Maybe your explanations are too technical. Yeah. Or maybe that particular topic just isn't resonating with your audience. Right. Analytics give you that valuable feedback loop. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But I've heard a lot of talk about watch time and audience retention. Yes. What are those exactly and why are they so important? <laughs> those, my friend, are like gold to the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> yeah. The Zinni Studio really broke this down. Essentially, these metrics tell YouTube how engaging your content is. Okay. High watch time and retention signal that people are sticking around. Right. Which tells YouTube, hey, this video is worth watching. Maybe we should show it to more people. So it's like a chain reaction. Yeah. Create great content that people actually watch. Yes. And YouTube will reward you by boosting your visibility. Precisely. And the more visibility you have, the more viewers you attract. Right and potentially the more opportunities you have for monetization. That makes sense. Speaking of monetization, have you considered the different ways you can generate income from your channel? We've touched on it a bit, but to be honest, it still feels a bit overwhelming. Sure. There are so many options out there, affiliate marketing, sponsorships, mm -hmm. digital products. Right. Where do you even begin? You're right, it can be a lot to process, especially when you're first starting out. Yeah. That's why I always recommend checking out Brian Garvin's free guide 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Ah, yes. <laughs> Our favorite affiliate marketing guru strikes again. <laughs> Seriously, folks, if you're looking for a clear, actionable roadmap to monetizing your YouTube channel, yeah. you need this guide. Yes, you do. Head over to BrianGarvin.com. Okay. That's Brian with an I. Right. And download your copy today. Come on, do it. The link's in his YouTube bio. It is. Trust us, it's a game changer. Oh, remember, monetization isn't something that happens overnight. Right. It takes time, consistency, and a willingness to adapt and evolve your strategy. So patience is key. Absolutely. Building a successful YouTube channel, faceless or not, is a marathon, not a sprint. Remember, skill early. Yeah. Their channel didn't magically explode overnight. Yeah. They put in the work, analyzed their analytics, and consistently refined their approach. So it's about trusting the process, right. staying focused on your goals, yes. and not getting discouraged if you don't see a million subscribers right away. Exactly. Celebrate the small wins, learn from your mistakes, and most importantly, have fun along the way. It's easy to get caught up in the numbers. It is. But at the end of the day, 
it should be enjoyable, right? Absolutely. Like, Passion is contagious. Yeah. If you're genuinely excited about your niche and the content you're creating, right. that energy will shine through and attract the right audience. So to wrap things up, what's the one piece of advice you would give to someone who's just starting out on their faceless YouTube journey? Don't wait for the perfect moment or the perfect video idea. Yeah. Just start creating. I like it. The beauty of YouTube is that it's a platform for continuous learning and growth. Yeah. You'll learn so much more by actually doing than by endlessly planning and strategizing. I love that. Take action, experiment, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yes. And hey, once you've launched that awesome faceless channel, be sure to share the link with us. We might even feature you in a future episode. We're rooting for you. Until next time, keep learning, keep creating, and keep diving deep. Ready to dive in? Yes, let's do it. Okay. So we we're talking about analytics. Right, like how do we actually like read them and use them? Okay, so think of your analytics dashboard as like this treasure map to understanding your audience. Okay, I like it. It's telling you what's working, what's not working, and most importantly, how viewers are really like experiencing your content, right? So it's not just about how many views you get. No, it's way more than that. Yeah. It's about who's watching, how long they're watching for, and where they're dropping off, if they are. Okay, so let's say we're looking at our analytics and we see like a big drop off in one particular video. Yeah. What does that tell us? Could be a few things. Or maybe that topic just wasn't as interesting to your audience. Okay. Or maybe the pacing was a bit off. Right, or maybe it was just too long. Exactly, or maybe the audio was off in that section. Oh, true. That's the thing about analytics. It gives you that really clear picture of what's resonating and what's not. I see. So it's like getting feedback directly from your audience, but like in data form. Exactly. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And you can use that feedback to improve your future content. Okay. I like it. Like if you see that people are consistently clicking away after the first minute, you know you need to work on those hooks, make those first few seconds really grab their attention. So it's all about like constantly tweaking and improving based on what the data is telling you. 100%. It's a process of continuous improvement, just like anything else worth doing. This has been so eye-opening, seriously. I'm glad to hear it. I feel like I have a whole new understanding of how faceless YouTube channels actually work. That's what we like to hear. And like the potential is huge. Like anyone can do this. Right, right. absolutely. You don't need to be a Hollywood filmmaker or have a million followers to make it on YouTube these days. It's all about finding your niche creating great content, and using those AI tools strategically. And don't forget about those analytics. They're your secret weapon for long-term success. I, like, who knew that data could be so empowering? It's all about using those insights to fuel your creativity and connect with your audience on a deeper level. I love it. Well, I think that just about wraps up our deep dive into the world of faceless YouTube channels. It's been a blast. It really has. Thanks for sharing your wisdom with us. Anytime. Remember, the most important step is to just start creating. Yes. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Just hit record and put yourself out there. You got this. Until next time, keep learning, keep creating, and keep diving deep.